Hello, in this video I want to give you an instruction how to use self. If you try to read the manual and said like, ah, I don't really understand how to use it, then just watch my video and after the video you can read some chapters of the handbook. And now let's get right into it. This is self if you open it. If you don't know how to open it, watch my other video about how to open self. Before I actually start explaining the stuff, I want to say three things. One thing is self is basically some kind of programming language, but you can also view self as the first graphical graph database that was implemented as far as I know. Or you can also view it as a system of the frames idea um, that is given in AI. That being said, let's start. If you start self, you have the shell over here. We don't care about what the shell is. We right click. No, we don't right click. We click the E and then we get the small evaluator, so-called evaluator, which is some kind of interactive shell that you can use to do any operation in regard of this object or in regard of not this object. When we open this one, we want to have a new object. So we hit open close brace and say get it. We want to get the object. If you want, don't want to click get it, then you can just hit control enter. You cannot see my control enter, but I actually hit it. And then you also get an object. These are two different objects here. We want to remove one of them. And then we click here this small extending button and then we see all the so-called slots. We don't want any slots, so we hit the middle mouse button, say move and move it away. Again, middle mouse button, move, move it away. One problem with the GUI in self is that all the all the operations that you can do are kind of hidden. So if, for example, I hit the middle mouse button and then I get this menu, I hit the right click and then I get this menu. And you have a lot of shortcuts that are hidden that are not really findable. But that being said, let's start off doing something. We want to add a slot. A slot is basically a pointer to something. You can let point to anything that you build, probably an object. And we want to add a slot. If you hit that, sorry, middle mouse click and then add slot. And by the way, the green one is okay. The red one is cancel. We have two, so we cancel one. You see this green marking, this is marking. The first thing you should do is hit backspace, which didn't work here. Okay, backspace, now we're here. We want to create a new slot or a new pointer. So we just type in the slot name and hit the green button, or I think we can hit control enter. And it points to nil or null, so to nothing basically. If you want to see where the pointer actually is pointing to, and you just hit this small pointer button and then you get the object that it's pointing to. Let's just for fun add another slot. I uh, will call it foo2. Sorry. And again, we have this nil pointer here or nil pointer here and it points to the same object. So this is really showing you the pointer stuff. If you want to rename your slot now, you can just double click it with the left mouse button and then you can add it here with the arrow keys. I want to tell you that I'm hitting the home button now or the end button now and they don't work in self so you have to move around with uh, arrow keys or in this case I, even the shift arrow keys doesn't work for marking stuff so it's a little bit hard to deal with at the beginning and very annoying even not at the beginning but that being said let's make it something useful we want to uh, create a new evaluator or open a new evaluator and we want to have the object 5 okay and Let's delete this for once. We don't delete it, we just hide it. And we have this object five here. And now let's get one back. So we have only this one pointer. And we'll just, just let it point to the five. And that's the way how to repoint something. We can also get a six, control enter, get a six, and let this foo two point to a six. Pretty easy. By the way, let's look inside the six. Mm, something we don't understand. It's some kind of small integer. We don't care. Okay, this way we actually created an attribute. And let's say we want to change the, the value of foo. And we want to see how this is actually behaving. So we type in foo and we type in colon and we type in three. We don't have an equal. Equals is, this one is just for if this is true or false. If you want to actually have an assignment, you have to use colon. And we say, do it. And you see the pointer changed to the three. Now we want to add a new function. Before we do so, let's delete all these attributes. Move them, delete them. Again, we're here with the empty object, add a new slot. And this time we call a, we create a function. And the function is created 
in this style. Let's just do it very simple. This is a function. This is the slot name, as I already explained. This tells that whatever comes next is an object and kind of like an, a constant thing, so you can change it later. I will talk about this later. And the braces here are the important thing. The braces tells the interpreter that this is a function object, so an object that contains a function. And let's say that's okay. And now we want to run this function. Let's run foo. We just call foo, say do it, and we get x is not found, of course, because there was no x. So we create just a new slot and create an x. Set to nil now, and now we do it, and now it's set to 33. 33. Next thing we want to do is create a function that has more then that has actually one parameter. So we call it foo2, or let's call it foo1 for one parameter. Parameter? Parameter? I'm not sure about the pronunciation here. It's okay. Anyway, we don't care. And the parameter is called param1. And again, we assign a function, and x is going to be x plus param1. And we say that's our function. Now we want to cool call foo1. Do it. And we get an error that foo1 was not found, which is kind of weird because we actually have foo1 here. So what actually happened? What happened is that the interpreter thinks that this is some kind of variable probably. And what you need is to give it a parameter, like the three, for example. And then we say do it. And you see the small 33 increased to 36. And we do it again, 39. Now we can say it, set it to one. Do it and 40. If we decide, oh, we want to change the function, we just double click here and nothing happened. Sorry for that. We click here and then we see the implementation. And now we can say, for example, times two. We say OK. And we get this arrow. Arrow. And here we go. And let's try it again. Do it. And you see it increases by two every time. Or let's make this 10. This is more easier to see. 60, 80, right? Okay, that was one par parameter, p parameter. It's very hard to say that word. Let's make a function with two parameters. Why do we do that? Because it's not as intuitive as it might be at the first sight. Slot name, first parameter, and second parameter. I will talk about this, the, the end at the end. Okay, and now we just define our function. And here we go. Let's try this foo2 and we say 1 and 5 sorry there was control enter there was a shortcut then you see the this whoop and then the number is applied you don't need end here this is like kind of the the name for the second parameter whereas the param2 or param1 contains the value of the parameter we double click this here and we for example say Hell, I don't know, T, 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 without the end at the beginning. And we see, well, that doesn't work. Something is strange. It tells us that, yeah, expecting A equal token it doesn't really help. So what it's telling us is that this thing here needs to be uppercase. If not, you can't define it, okay? If it's uppercase, everything is working fine. And then you go back here, say T, T, T. And okay, it makes no sense because we have the same numbers. Let's make this nine, control enter, and then we have a 10. So always make sure that these things with the colon, no, okay, that's strange. At the beginning, it's kind of confusing. So the first name usually is small, and then this thing starts with an uppercase letter. And also these parameters, I think they have to be lowercase letters. Let's try and make them uppercase and uppercase and we see it doesn't work so the the stuff that contains the actual values should be lowercase okay so far so good we spent a lot of time on this one let's um try something new we have this and let's say we, we just did do it we, we can let's do it again and we see it's 11 now let's put this to 15 and say get it and we don't get anything the reason is we don't have any return statement in our function. We want to have an explicit return statement. I say explicit because something's happening later. We return, this is the thing for returning something, 
and we return x. And we hit OK, and this is going to be an arrow. And it tells us expecting a race token. OK, not really helpful message. What it tells us is if you, re if you, if you do C++, Java, or PHP, you know that you always need a semicolon. And self does not need a semicolon, but a point. You should get used to always add the point to not forget it somewhere and get strange error messages. Now we add two points here and we say OK and everything's working fine. Let's put this to 20 and get it again. And now we get 21. Why? Because that's our x or the value inside of x. We can check this. We can just look. Ah, OK. This is the point where it points to. So this is not actually x that we're getting. We get the value of x. This is what we got. This is what we received when we returned x. So this is the the value of x is the return value. OK, so far for the return statements. Now we have this nice little object and we made all our stuff and everything is fine. But we want to um, like clone the object. We want to copy it. You know, we don't have any classes here. We don't have any new operator or something. So we need to somehow multiply our, our objects. We want to do that. And I have no idea how to implement that feature. But we can just um, use the existing feature to do that. Um, we add a new slot. Again, middle mouse click, set add slot. And this time we call it delegate one. And we add a star, which is kind of a special character here. And we just hit apply. That's fine for now. And we see that this is the nil pointer. And now we want to have a totally different object does not have anything to do with this one. And we type in traits clonable. Now, I'm not English. By mother tongue, so I don't have any idea what really what traits really mean. Um, for me, in this situation, it does not have any meaning. We basically get it. Um, just don't care about the names. This is what I want to say. And we have this pointer here pointing to nil. And now we just move it around and say it should be clonable. This traits clonable object. And now we have actually implemented the feature or or added the feature to our object that we are working on here. So we just call the clone method and let's get it and we have this object see we have the 32 here uh, the 33 here and we have the 21 one here and let's actually change this one we want to have a 55 again get it and we reset the pointer here and you see that this 21 changed to a 55 but this didn't so it's a totally different object okay it's not like a reference to this one. It's a copy. I will talk about the star a little bit later. We remove that one. And now we want to have a new object. Again, an empty one. So we remove the parent, middle click, move, and then right click, dismiss, middle click, move, right click, dismiss. Now we have this empty object. And we want to add a function that was not there before or a slot, a function slot. Let's create an attribute, bread slot. The bread should be, let's say, 78. So we set the pointer to 78. Now we go back to our former object and add a slot here. This time we call it delegate2 and add the asterisk, or the star at the end. And again, we have this nil pointer here. This time we let it point here. And now we don't call a function. We say bread should equal or should be assigned, or otherwise, no. 98 should be assigned to bread. And let's say do it. And we see this actually changed. Although this evaluator is actually only in regard of this object. What actually happens is here the asterisks. Um, is that they delegate all the calls that cannot be found here. So it's kind of like the inheritance structure. This is the reason for, or this is the reason why when you watch other tutorials, you s mostly see something like this. You have parent with the difference that you can have as much parents as you want. Want. Let's call this parent two. I to that's totally no problem. You can freely change all the behavior here. Now we have our object here. Let's make this point to nil again. Call this one again. Do it. 
now we get an error because it doesn't find it anymore because the pointer is not pointing here anymore. There's another very interesting behavior here, a little bit advanced feature. Let's, okay, let's skip the advanced feature. I forgot how to use it. <laughs> it doesn't matter, it's not that important. Okay, but the important thing, the lessons learned is that when you have an asterisk, then you call on a function or like some slot in any way and the slot is not found here, then it starts searching in these so-called parent slots or traits. I think they're called traits until they find it. And if you, let's remove this one and this one, or let's hide it. And now you want to see all these trait objects. So what is behind parent and parent two? Then you click this small, I don't know what this is, slash backslash thing. And then you get actually two objects here. Which ones? this one and this one. Okay, next important thing, comments. You write a function and you think, oh, this is very complicated. So we should write a comment. And then you search for comments and it's really hard to find a comment about how to make comments. And it's actually pretty easy. You just have the quotes here and you can just type whatever you want. And let's make this here. And type whatever you want and hit enter and everything is totally fine. So this is just a comment. By the way, I will show you another very interesting feature now. Let's make this very small here. It didn't work, really work. Let's add a lot of text here. You see, we have a lot of lines now. And, but the, this editor is still very, very small. If you want to fit it to size, then you hit control L and then it extends to the necessary amount of space. Now it's very small and we don't need that space. So again, control L and it's getting smaller. Okay, that's it for comments. We don't need any comments anymore, so we delete them. Unfortunately, we cannot use end and home. So usually you use the mouse. Now we want to talk about local variables, how to actually use a local variable. So for example, we have a local variable that should be assigned, uh, the five should be assigned to the local variable and X should always be the local variable plus X. And now we say, okay, and Seems like working fine so far. Let's call foo with the parameter three in it. Let's say do it. And we get an error. Why? The, the lookup error local is not found. Now it's telling us that we don't actually have local. So we have to change this thing. And we have to use pipes to first declare all the local variables that we want to use. And it's pretty easy. Just type local, say OK. And now we, let's get it. And it tells us small integer not found. This just gave me a hard time in the video. I had no idea what happened. Um, and again, this error message is very misleading. What actually happened is that we, or I, forgot to add the point, the full stop, the dot at the end. Now it's working fine. You see the value here is increasing always by five. Working fine. This is the way how to define a local variable. If you want two, Always don't forget the point. We can add a second one and we can use this here. Say okay and do it. And you see it's always increasing by that amount. Okay, we got very far so far. If you're not thinking, okay, I want to make my own documentary for myself. I want to open my own text editor and just copy that stuff. So you right click and copy. Find there's no copy actually. Okay, you try control C or control V. Then you figure out you cannot copy between self, the self world here and the outside world in your PC. Um, so you have to always retype that stuff. You cannot copy and paste between these two worlds. Also very inconvenient, but that's the way it is right now. We're almost at the end. The next thing I wanna talk about is assignments. We have uh, various different assignments. Let's add a new slot and call it, I don't know. LAA. So the first way I did like assign stuff is I typed in a number here, I got the object and reset the pointer, which is pretty annoying when you do that all the time. Um, much, much better ideas when you have, when you add a slot and you want to add, you know, you want to add a variable or an attribute to your object. Then let's say this is an attribute. And the natural thing you think is, we just set it to 32, 33 and say, okay. And now what you see is that this icon is a little bit different to this one. 
But wait a minute, we just learned that, or I, I just told you some time before that when you use equals, it's all about uh, that if it's true or false, it's not about really assigning something. If you want to assign something, let's call this attribute two, uh, add two, you actually do it like this. So let's try it this way. And now we get this um, expecting an equal token. Hmm, interesting. The thing is, if you want to define a variable in like the way that I used to do it with like first assigning it and then uh, changing the pointer, then this is the way to go. This is the like initial assignment for a variable. If you hit enter or control enter, then you see where is an attribute two is here. And now we see the three. And like I told you, it's like a different icon here. And this is a difference between equals and this arrow to the left. Let's see what happens. We have attribute two, and now we want to reset it. We are reassign it. Once again, it's a little bit counterintuitive that when you want to assign it, use the colon. But if you want to like assign a value in the add slot stuff here, then you don't use the colon. Don't get confused with it. Anyway, so let's do this one. Let's watch the three. It's getting to 23. Okay, everything is fine so far. And now we have attribute and we set it to 22. Also colon, uh, point and do it. And now it says attribute not found. The reason for this is when you assign something with the equals, it's kind of like a constant and you cannot change it in this way. And this is the way, the same way as you think about the functions that we defined in the first place. Uh, you remember, I just type it here now. We said foo equals something. So this basically says that we have a new slot that has a constant value and the constant value is an object that contains a function. That's what it actually is saying. Although constant is kind of not really a constant because you see this is the pointer and I can just drag it over here. So it's a constant in regard of this colon stuff doesn't work, right? Also here, three not found, uh, uh, sorry, foo not found. Although we have a foo here, this is the function. In this case, we don't see the pointer actually pointing to something, so we cannot re-point it to something. But in case of like these these objects, if you have constant objects, you can just reassign it with your mouse. Okay, that's it for the first half of my tutorial about how to use that stuff. The next one will have more advanced features. Before we go though, we want to save our snapshot. We do this by middle clicking, clicking, yeah, double G. By middle click, by middle clicking. This is very hard to say. Uh, anywhere here on the, let's say, let's call it desktop, um, and say save snapshot as, and we just accept that, and it's writing to memory. Finished. Okay, that's it for the first video. Uh, make sure to watch the second video. Also, pretty interesting stuff in there. Uh, thanks for watching so far. If you have any comments, questions about this video, leave it in the comments. Make sure to re read the video description because if there are any updates on the video, if I like talked bullshit, then I will correct myself inside the video description because YouTube does not have annotations anymore. Thanks for watching.